Hello, this is Lit Happens. I'm your host, Danica Lore. We're here to celebrate the literary arts here in Saskatchewan. And today I'm very pleased to welcome our guest, John Moffat. John, welcome to Lit Happens. Hi there, thanks for having me. It's always a delight for me to talk to new authors. We've had a lot of authors over the years that come back every time they have a new book. So it's it's really, really exciting for me to talk to new people. So John, I don't know much about you. We've only just met, but I know that you have published a series of children's books. So can you tell me a little bit about yourself first and what led you to want to write for children? I taught grade two for a number of years, and then I retired in uh, 2016. And uh, during the time when I was teaching, I read a lot of books to my classes. I taught grade two and grade three, and we, we used a lot of books for our literacy. And uh, sometimes I read a book and then I think after it, I thought, perhaps I could write something myself. So then I started trying writing some books myself to just to see how it would go. And have you been have you been writing for a long time, or is this something that just happened after retirement? I would say it happened mostly after retirement. I had more time, and then uh, I focused my time just on writing books for kids. So I'd say that my books are mainly for kids from birth to about ten years of age. That's kind of the interest group that I that I'm aiming for. And when you when you think back to those to those little ones in the classroom, were there particular stories that always caught their attention and started to give you ideas of things that you thought you would like to think about a little further? Some of the really easy books, but they found that they found them really interesting were books like Little Bear and uh, Toad and Frog stories, and then of course always kids love any kind of like a, a story that's a, a fairy tale or something like that. So tell me a little bit about your books that you have published. I, I noticed you have quite a list. So tell us, uh, tell me a little bit about, about your books. I've been writing books in two formats. Uh, the first format is a hardback book. Each, each hardback book has three stories and I've, I've been making them just in the last couple of years. The very first one is called Read All Day. It has the stories Luella Lama, Nothing to Do, and The Secret Tooth. And for that book, I wrote the stories and then drew the pictures as well. And my son helped me draw pictures for this, The Secret Tooth. Then I also went a little further and I made another book called Read me a story, please. That book contains three uh, stories in it as well. Thanksgiving Turkey, Peace for Kids, and Snowflakes. Following that, I went ahead and wrote another book. It's called Time to Read. Time to Read has Kite Day, Noah's Sleepover, and City Kid on the Farm. And then I wrote this book. The orange one is called Reading is Fun. Reading is Fun has Wet Feet, Mouse in the House, and a COVID song for kids. <laughs> the public library downtown, the Francis Morrison Library, purchased a few copies of this orange book, Reading is Fun. So if people would like to borrow that one, you could uh, have it there. And if, if you'd like to listen to what it sounds like, our daughter, Julie, Julie Labreck, reads it on YouTube. So if you go to YouTube, Julie Labreck, and type in wet feet, you can hear what the story sounds like and see all of the pictures. Now, John, if people want to buy the books, where can they find them? The books are being sold at AR Pierogies on, in, in the center part of uh, Saskatoon. They're sold at Pitchfork on the east side over by Costco or else you could purchase them from myself. The little books that I'm selling are the softback co uh, copies. They're made by Uno down in the old farmer's market, and they look like this. They're the same stories that are in the hardback books, but they're just in the softback version. So here we have wet feet. 
Thanksgiving turkey. I couldn't get a turkey to stand still to make pictures of him, so I had to draw it to myself. <laughs> My stuffy. Lots of children like to run around with a, carrying a little toy or a stuffy or a favorite blanket. So that's why I wrote that story. City kid on the farm. About a little boy who goes to the his grandma's farm and ends up picking eggs in the chicken coop. And the other one is kite day. So some of these books like look like they have illustrations and some of them have photographs. Um, are, are they, is it just the covers or inside the book? Are there also either photographs or illustrations or is there a mix of both? Tell me there's, a little bit about the art. There's a mix of both. Our daughter, Julie, has a company called Julie Lebrecht Photography. So she takes pictures and supplies pictures for my books. And if I can't find pictures that way, then I just end up drawing them myself. So here's an example of pictures that Julie took in Kite Day, and then in the book uh, Thanksgiving Turkey, like I said, it's hard to find pictures of turkeys, so I just ended up drawing the pictures myself. And then my son filled them in, he went on Photoshop and just filled them in with color. So I say, I say that one of the challenges in writing a story is matching up pictures with your text. It takes a little while to write the story, but then it takes a little longer to find all of the pictures that correspond and then to put it all together and get it printed. It's a bit of a challenge, but I really enjoy it. It sounds delightful that you have family members involved because sometimes we find that as artists, as authors, we're working in this very independent, closed off space. And we sometimes uh, disconnect a little bit from our family. So it's really wonderful that this project brings members of your family in. Yeah, they're quite talented and it's nice that they know how to use a computer better than I do. And uh, and help me with things like drawing pictures, uh, taking photos, and just getting everything all aligned. Well, that John, that's, oh, sorry, that's about almost all the time we have today. Do you have anything else you'd like to share with us before we wrap up? I, I just think that it's nice to see children reading books, and I hope that my books are a nice size, that they're easily handled, uh, they're easy to read, they have lots of colorful pictures, I think they're interesting for children and I hope that people can uh, access them at Pitchfork and at AR Pierogies or for myself and that kids will have a good time reading them. Thank you, John. It was a, it was a delight to talk to you. This has been Lit Happens. You can find past episodes by going to YouTube. You can also contact me on Facebook, Instagram, or by contacting me at danikalore at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.